This episode of A Hero's Journey podcast is brought to you by S&P Inc. right here in Las Vegas, Seattle, and Arizona. JPS Computers out of Oregon. Thank you, uh, Jesse and Alex. And then you can be listening to us right now every Monday night at 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock Eastern on RockRageRadio.com. Um, 20 million listeners a month on Rock Rage Radio. Um, my name is Brian Hopkins. Yeah, you know, my, yeah, I know, huh? Uh, my name is Brian Hopkins. It's, it's all about, well, one, welcome back, Chase. Chase is all the way from Aust Austria right now where Austria. he's been singing yes, sir. opera, wearing suits, and kicking ass uh, halfway around the world. Dude, I'm proud of you. Hey, you know, I'm just so glad to be back where there's air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where you have internet. Yeah. But, um, you know, that's what this is about. And, and I encouraged you, what, a year ago we went through this. You started work, working on my show. And it was one of those things where, like, you have to take advantage of these little things that turn into other things. You did that last year, seven weeks, and they ask you back to do it again this year. And I'm sure you have more stories. I'm sure I'm going to lose you again here real soon. But um, I want to introduce my guests today. There's not one, not two. But three, uh, we almost had five people in here, um, but it, it, it would I don't know how to handle that. I, but today I've got Frankie, Frankie DiMaggio, who uh, I just heard you were related to DiMaggio himself, the related, baseball player. You know that that makes we have something in common. Oh, yeah. What's that? Marilyn Monroe was married to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> DiMaggio. <laughs> she, she, uh, she loved him and yeah. he, he was obsessed with her. He wouldn't even let anybody come to her funeral. Oh, he was that good of a guy. He, wow. He, he didn't trust anybody after she she was she died. So you know it was kind of a kind of a weird thing. You know he 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 just didn't trust him. So he buried. He spent a uh, hundred and sixty thousand dollars on her funeral, which back then was like, I mean, that's three a lot quarters of, money. of a million dollars. Yeah, now. that's a lot of money. Yeah. But he went really deep. Like instantly, you like went really deep yeah. into this. But Frankie, we've been Frankie D. We've been friends for a while <laughs> now. Much exactly. Since you got here. Exactly. You had a Mohawk when I first when yes, I first I'm like, who's this? Fuck who's this dude? The Mohawk the and the sideburns. Uh, yeah. I hate um, punk rock. <laughs> and, uh, not punk rock at all. I, I just never know. Just had a vibe. Yeah. Um, but you, you came to my show. Yes. You knew Megan. Megan. Megan Ruger. Megan. She's the one that introduced us. Oh. Yeah. But no, see, uh, was it yes, before that? it was before that. Because Megan, I've only known Megan for about six years, seven Since years, maybe. Since 2016. Yeah. So I'd seen you, but we hadn't probably officially met. Exactly. But I'd seen you everywhere, and then she brought you to the show, and I'm like, oh, okay, punk rock guys here. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of yeah. otherwise shows. Yeah. I've seen All the you. otherwise shows. Exactly. So, Who yeah. were my very first guests on a Hero's Journey podcast? I was going to wear their shirt tonight, but uh, I, I said, nah. They now you wear their tattoo, they haven't though. They have not paid so. me any money. So. <laughs> no. Um, so I want to introduce over yeah. here your better half, um, yeah. and she's the reason why you even guys you guys got on the show yeah. because I, I, I love her. <laughs> I love you, Valerie. It's good to it's good to have you on the Thank show. You. I appreciate it. You can talk into the mic. I'm Don't... excited to be here. Yeah. Are you nervous though? No, not even a little bit. No, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So here's the thing. I I met you at an otherwise show with Buck Cherry. And I kept looking over Frank's shoulder saying, I love her. I love her. She's amazing. And I was and saying, take her. <laughs> <laughs> lies. 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 All lies. But I had a great time. I had a great time uh, hanging out with you. And then all of a sudden I get a, I get a message from you. And because the both of you went into this like venture together after getting married, after this We'll get into how you met and all that crazy stuff, but you guys bought West Coast Tattoo Parlors, the, the two of them mm -hmm. here in town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th how did that happen? Like, where did that come from? Well, it's it kind of came through a couple of different things. Um, we were in business with a, a company that did voice cloning voice cloning yeah in fact to talk about podcast it was created for podcasting okay so if you for instance did a podcast and recorded it and then you went back and said i should have said this or i wish i would have said this or, i wish i would have asked 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 him this okay you can go back with your clone and ask that question 
Oh, wow. Well, and that's what AI does now. So Well, it does it, but you have to have permission to do it. And right. so, so podcasting was what it was created for. But we thought, you know, let's use this for something, you know, like better, like posthumous use. Like we felt if you're going to save your family pictures from your whole life, why yeah. not send, save your voice? Because everybody always says... And if I could just hear their voice one more time, or I can't even, or I can't remember what they sounded like. I save people. I save messages on your cell phone. On my yeah. cell phone for people I who have passed away. Not even that. Like I've, I've have some that are from people who have passed away. Yeah. And I have some from just really special messages that I want to keep for a long time. But yeah. I want to get into really quick. I'm, I don't want to cut you off because I want to get into the other guest. Yeah. And this dude, oh, so, oh, you look like oh, a damn rock you? star. <laughs> Thank um, you, Rob Diab. <laughs> Diablos. Diablos. Yeah. Yes. Um, who tattooed me, you guys. Uh, Rob tattooed me this past week. Um, and it was an honor to sit down and get to know you. And what's really crazy is you look like this. And as we get into talking to you, you have this Alabama accent. And uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to do an accent. but you, And you're just this genuine, real dude. And I really dug that. I dug the vibe when I walked into you guys' place. And that's what I liked about hanging out with you. We don't even know when we actually met. We yeah, don't know the moment, but it's been a while. And every time I see you, you've always been kind to me. And then you introduced me to this crazy lady who I love. <laughs> and it just was fire. And then I walk into, you know, how you guys get into, again, finish that story, how you bought oh, West yeah. Coast. You went off in a tangent. We, we, yeah, yeah. We, I'm sorry. We wanted to we wanted to do something that you know that that was you know local. Uh -huh. You know, being you know being in the rock and roll business. Yeah. You know, running the same circles as me. All of our friends have tattoos. All of our friends are in bands. All their friends are in bands, and even down to the bikers. You know, because I've done stuff with yeah. Sturgis and everything else. So, so you just those are my people. Right. So I said, well, that would be a really easy transition. You know, and people have broken our balls for it. So, oh, you don't, you guys aren't artists. You shouldn't own tattoo shops. Oh, that is so annoying. Okay, to me. so I shouldn't own a diamond shop because I didn't cut diamonds. I mean, right. come on, I, I, you know. So Make there's sure always. So we thought that would be a good opportunity to to buy something in Vegas. We could we could bring all our friends on board and work with people and that we know, and and you know, stay in the business without being in the business because the business here, as you know it, in Vegas, the music business is like. Can we do raspberries on the? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. you know it sucks. It sucks. Yeah. It's gotten bad. You know it. It, it so has. So this keeps us in touch with people. You know, and, right? And if you know celebrity, you know celebrities, which we consider you one, we we bring them in. You know, talk about us. Come on down. That's I, and I really appreciate that. And you gave me the, an opportunity to be tattooed by, like I said, a great guy that I wouldn't have known. And you know, now it's like I was just talking about you to Michaela and. And talking up your work, but as you know, uh, being a tattoo artist, you know, people are, they're particular, you know, they, right, they right. find who they want. And I'm like, well, this, this, this is my guy, but you know, you guys have all kinds of crazy artists that are really great and have their specialties yeah. and whatnot. They're all and, ma massive characters too. Like everybody, they're, they're all a little nuts, but my God, the art is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're a lot of fun. Like I have a really good crew now. That's awesome. Hey, let's fix her angle real quick. Is it bad? Slide back this way. Oh, okay. Cause you're talking completely oh. sideways. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and, and you're not, you're not even in the shot. There you are. Oh, You're she was okay. there. I'm Don't here. worry. She was there. I was yeah, making it look okay. good. I'm okay. <laughs> Perfect. I appreciate you. But no, and, and I got that. Like when I was in there, I was, you know, the who was it? The other artists that were in there with us. Oh, Bobby Vegas uh, and Chris. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Vegas and, and Chris, both, you know, talented guys. And then I, I fell down the rabbit hole of West Coast <laughs> tattoo parlors on Instagram. Um, you know, I just started watching you know all the other artists and all the stuff and you're tagging me in all those and i love it thank you um and it's it's really cool because tattooing is and i compared it to being when i walked in to you you know i said i don't i don't want to tell you what to do let's come up with something and and it i don't want to show this too much because it's scabbed up right now and right, right. we'll show it later <laughs> but actually chase you have a you have a photo a little video of the tattoo you did for me yeah, let me, let me pull it up right here. Hold yeah, on. it should be on the screen here. Oh, it's a, uh, the technology's fighting me. Hold on. 
That's okay. Yeah. You should have put up like a picture of My Little Pony. A little yeah, tattoo. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On the small oh, of my back. Hey, that nice was really tattoo, sweet. tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> I was embarrassed. Yeah, it's Robbed okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Here we go. Well, that's, yeah, that's us in, in there hanging out. I sent you a little video close up uh, on the admin. But, Yay. yeah, so what that is, is uh, it's, it, we'll tell them. Go ahead. It's a uh, realistic anatomical heart, and it has graffiti on it, which also includes your brother's name. There you go. And it's ripping through my skin, which is really cool, and I appreciate it, dude. Um, it was really cool. And my brother is, who either they're showing, he's showing a video right now yeah. of us hanging out in the, in there and us talking about what we wanted to do when, um, when we started working on this video. I mean, this tattoo. That's my video. Yeah, <laughs> that's your video. I'm good so. at editing. I'm very good with that. <laughs> but I love the vibe of you guys' store. Yeah. I love, that's just one of them too. Yeah. Uh, we have really good artists and they're just like one thing that people always talk about is the atmosphere because we have such funny people like and they all genuinely love each other everybody gets along everybody's kind of like a team it took me a while to get to that good team but now we have a really really good team that's awesome and people love joking with them they tell us I, it's like coming and hanging out at a barber shop but it's a tattoo parlor and what's cool is I have a shirt from you guys as yeah. well. Um, can you get a shot of this? There you go. I was gonna wear it, but without a left chest muscle, it always looks so weird. My girl is always saying to me, the logo's off center. I'm like, ah, <clears throat> I'm born without a left chest muscle. It's always gonna be off center. Um, <laughs> It, seriously, it's a it's a weird thing. Way too much information. Yeah, no, well, so you know, it's a birth up. effect. You know, way too much information. <laughs> so I'm gonna get into a couple of things here because I, you know. Each one of you, I want I want to get to know you a little bit. I know, Frankie, yourself, uh, you're a promoter. Like, we got into, well, okay, so you're not. So I hate that name, promoter, because, you know, even from watching TV, promoters are always the scumbags. Don King. Yeah, they're, they're always <laughs> the scumbags, you know. Um, I, I started out in Vegas as a, a DJ at a strip club. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Why would I lie about something? No. I <laughs> <laughs> so that that turned into um, a lot of celebrities. Trent so, Re Trent Reznor came used to come. I mean, I could go over yeah. the list of rock stars and celebrities and politicians that. Oh, I he met. was even then when uh, there when Johnny Depp was thrown in a trash can. Ooh. Oh wow! Can we talk about? Yeah, that? anything you want. <laughs> that was at Cheetahs. Really? Yeah, and that was <laughs> during uh, Twenty One Jump Street. Okay. Yeah, and he got mouthy with uh, a guy by the name of One Kick Nick. Have you met? No, Nick. I don't know who that Nick is. Nick has a dojo here, and he's the last guy ever to piss off because and he, he's the last guy to lose his temper, but also very dangerous with his legs. Okay. Kind of like a Van Damme, but yeah. he was the door guy there, and this guy got mouthy, and him and the manager took him out back and threw him into the trash can. There was no um, uh, favoritism for celebrities back when I was starting out in Vegas, which is 94, 95. Oh, wow. Didn't matter how big of a celebrity you were if you treated employees poorly. You got treated poorly. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was That's more of now, like, days. now we need them so badly that, you know, for our, for marketing and everything else. But nobody was thinking about that because all, yeah. the, all the clubs were packed. There was only like five of them back then. All so. my run-ins with him have always been cool. So it's, <laughs> you know, but he was coming up. You said 21 Jump Street. He yeah. was like, you know, wet behind the ears and young yeah. guy and, and whatnot. But so that, oh, give me, I, for, for instance, give me a... Yeah, you know, introduce Valerie to the stage on the main stage. <laughs> DJ, give me that DJ oh, voice. Oh, man, no, 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 don't make me do that. I thought that's a part of my life. <laughs> Gentlemen, coming up next on stage, it's Valerie all the way. See, I'm losing my See? voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get I've those dollar been... bills out, gentlemen. You're I so have a, stupid. I was, you know, I was I've lucky never enough. I've never gone in one, by the way. I've oh, never been wow. in a strip club. Never. I was lucky enough to, you know, at the time we were killing it. I mean, we made a lot of money. I mean, yeah. cash money every night. But I, I was bored with it. I really got bored. I got tired of the drama. You okay. know, now, now, now I'm working at, you know, now we got tattoo shops, which is <laughs> pretty much the same thing without the dollar bills and, the, and the, you know, and, Pretty much the same mentality as strippers. <laughs> They're all pissed off at the same time. They're all got problems. They got 
Everybody's got Sorry. PMS. Some of the them have time. drug problems. Some of them alcohol. <laughs> Not you anymore, know. though. So people we got that rid we, of those ones. Okay. I would like to point that out. Yeah, please. don't look at yeah, yeah, them yeah. now. Same. We had yeah. to nope. we had to go through quite a there's few. There's people. I <laughs> you know there's there's artists that are going and listening and they're going. You know, yeah, well, but they know. You know, that's it's just artists are a different breed. They, you know, we really are. Even Chase, Chase is an artist himself. Um, you know, half these guitars more are his in here as well. So yeah. I understand that artist side of it. Um, being an artist myself and walking in. And getting into you know what what you were doing and kind of seeing that world you know how did you become a tattoo artist rob so the earliest memory that i have with tattoos is um <clears throat> seeing my aunt uh and her tattoos when i was younger she had those little very common cliche like a little tweety bird and stuff like that that were on her ankles yeah and i used to like to play with them when I was a kid I would sit there and like scratch the skin and try to and like be fascinated by the fact that it wouldn't come off and right. stuff like that that's like the earliest memory I have um so that was definitely like a uh a I think a seed in the beginning right but uh, as far as art goes like I've always been fascinated by art always been a part of art um it's not just tattooing like I've always um painted uh sculpted stuff like that it's it's never been just a, a one-way street with me when it comes me to too. that wow so um but yeah no like i pretty much established when i was in high school that i still wanted to be a tattoo artist like i already had that figured out because in high school i already had almost sleeves no way. so yeah i already had like tattoos all over my arms so okay. um that's commitment yeah at a young age that's that is commitment. You That's didn't crazy. To, you didn't go to Baptist school, apparently. No, <laughs> yeah, no, I, it was it, not were, that. How, <laughs> yeah. how old are you? Uh, I'll be 32 in March. Okay. No, thank you. He was in a cult. Yeah, so I want to get into that because I was shocked. We're sitting there, and like I said, the energy that you put off, um, you can't, we couldn't grab that from that video that, that he was playing. Yeah. Um, but walking in, the vibe was really cool. That's what I dug. Um getting introduced to you and i had spoke to you on the phone before going over there because you kind of vet out your artists and who's going to put ink on your body oh yeah absolutely. And that kind yeah. of thing and so i did that then went over and met you and then we get to talking and you're like yeah i grew up in a cult i went like, wait what yeah dude tell me about this like where what I'll call you back. Yeah, no, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll call, I'll so, call you back. Ooh, wrong number. I, I, I was looking one. for the tattoo artist. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was already getting ink done when we, so we got in this conversation. It's all good. Um, I do want uh, to put this across before I say anything, yeah. that I, uh, I use the term cult in the scenario very loosely. Okay. Um, and I know that the term cult can also be defined in many different ways. Right. Um, so basically what it was, um, I went to a specific Christian church when I was younger and, um, it was basically in the exact same family as the Holy Rollers. Uh, you know, a lot of, um, screaming and shouting, a lot of, um, like the, the people that handle snakes and stuff like that. It's the yeah. same people. Is that the snake yeah. people? It's yeah. uh, it's part of the same branch, basically, yeah. as that. But we, ironically, weren't one of the crazy ones. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we were actually pretty m more basic of a church. It was my my family personally and their beliefs I that see. where the cult aspect came in. Uh, so uh, misinterpretation of scripture, oh, stuff it, like that. It was like everything revolved around family and family only and um anything that kind of introduced anything outside of this bubble that they created for themselves it it was almost like it was it was non-existent or it was or it was automatically of the devil so um it, it's it's having that mentality um mm -hmm. that basically everything other than what you personally feel is wrong like you know what i mean like yeah. it was almost like growing up with a um like a obviously a non-murderous version of the Manson family, like the way that it was, like the way the thinking was. Wow. Um, and that must that had to be rough as a kid to try and find your identity, try and find out who you are and what you're all about. But this is being forced upon you. Yeah, you know, and this um, is how you have to be. It's still being done, and 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 if you can see this podcast. 
parents that hold your kids down and keep you from listening to the radio, watching certain TV shows, video games, all that stuff. Doesn't now, say, work. Like all, was... all your all your all your pushing doesn't work. Right, it doesn't work. Right. It go, they go. We go. We go the opposite way. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely. I do feel like that is a factor, and mm -hmm. um, I I knew at a young age that I, I was definitely not the the person my family wanted me to be by okay. any means i knew yeah. that um you know like i i had a lot of heroes growing up like you know one prime example obviously marilyn manson marilyn manson was a huge influence and a huge hero of mine growing up wow. and uh i would have to like sneak and hide and and listen to my music basically when nobody was around i could never enjoy <laughs> my music or anything uh, like that you know um but yeah, no, it's, it basically, it, it just comes from that, that mentality of trying to shelter your child from everything, not letting them experience life for themselves and not let them make their own choices. Right. Um, <clears throat> well, you have a beautiful family, a beautiful wife. You're a good human. Like I got that energy and vibe right off you the moment I walked in there. And here's a guy that is all blacked out. You've covered up every tattoo you've had on you. Well, you got to explain that. You know, you have, yeah. to. And, you have to, you know, and you did explain that to me, but mm -hmm. you know, where explain it to everybody else listening, all the listeners out there. So, um, I actually have a plan for what I'm doing with my body. Right. Um, but as of right now, I'm currently working on full body blackout from the jawline down. Uh, and once it's completed and fully saturated, which obviously you have to go over it a couple of different times, like you can't expect to go into that and just be like, oh, it's going to be fully saturated in the first go and everything's going to look great. No, it's going to be a process. It's going to take time. It could even take years. So you have to be committed, you have to have dedication, and you definitely have to have patience. But it, but it can work. It's painful. Um, it's, it's very, it is very painful. It is not fun whatsoever. No. But uh, it, it, what really matters is how bad do you want it. Right. And that's, that can be said with everything. How bad do you want it? Right. Uh, so I'm going to be going back over everything with uh, white and gray, like sacred geometry. Designs oh wow! All over my body. So yeah. <clears throat> and what's crazy? Not crazy, but you were honest with me and said that the reason why this came about was they were you know tattoos are personal to you. Tattoos right. are things that we stare at, and we know where we were, what we were thinking about, what why we got them, you know what they mean to us. And right. I don't care if it's you know a little itty bitty tattoo to whatever to my first tattoo where I almost passed out. Cause I, I was so nervous I didn't eat the second they started, you know, putting ink on me, I'm like starting to pass out and they were holding me up and giving me a Mountain Dew right, and then right, told me to right. go eat, you know, and that's my first one, but they're all, you know, important to us in some way. And when I asked you, you said, yeah, they had meaning to you, but there was now they have meaning because it, yeah. it, you don't have to get into it, but. Oh, no, no, I, I, I don't yeah. mind. Um, it, there's not really a whole lot to say. Yeah. Um, it, I could get in no. greater depth all no, day I, long about it. But really, honestly, it comes down to um, my biggest mentor when I was learning how to tattoo uh, was somebody that I really looked up to. He was like a father figure to me. He was like one of my best friends. I really looked up to this guy. And uh, I wanted to be like him, like I, it, the way that, as a matter of fact, he was one of the original people that got me wanting to do color portraits specifically, mm -hmm. like from watching him and how he did it. And um, so needless to say, like I idolized this guy, right. like I loved him. He was a great friend. <clears throat> he ended up, um, if I can say this, yeah. fucking me over like right. worse than just about anybody else has in my life. Um, and he did a good easily 90% of my body. Right. And um, if if he didn't do it originally, he redid it. You know oh, what I mean? So yeah. so over 90% of my body was covered in his work. Right. And when somebody does the things that he did, uh, and then you wake up every single day being reminded of that and, and sitting there looking at that and being like, I remember when we did this. I remember when we did that. I remember these memories. Mm -hmm. I remember we, we were talking about putting all this together for a, a short duration of time. All of that. You know what I mean? You have to live with that. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it's not, which I'm not saying that there hasn't ever been somebody out there that's gotten a tattoo from somebody that they now currently can't stand. But right. it's, it's different for me because of how much dedication and time I put not only with my body, but with my career into this guy in his shop and for him to turn around and yeah. do the things that he did. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot. So you you had to. You made a choice. I made and a choice. That, that's, that's there was actually a guy. Uh, he's uh, I, I believe he is from Canada, but his name's Remy, and uh, he went through the whole blackout suit wow. si- situation. Uh, uh, his shop is Rocky Mountain Tattoo Parlor, uh-huh. I believe. Uh, but yeah, I, I've literally watched him for Th- a thanks year. Thanks for the plug, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I've been watching this guy for a long time and I, I loved the, uh, the, you know, how he went through the whole entire process. He, and he's still going through it. Well, see, and, and that's what, um, you know, a hero's journey podcast is about is each one of us goes on this journey, right? And you can live in this, this space where it's just comfortable, right? But you got to step in across that line where it's uncomfortable, where you're not aware of. That's understandable. Yeah. Because you can't look at them your artwork, they don't mean the same thing anymore if they've taken away their meaning. Right. So I have tattoos done by a guy that lived in my house that screwed me over, but I have the opposite. I'm gonna keep it. I'm just not gonna tell anybody who did it. I'll tell everybody, anybody did it but you. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, so, right. So that's, you know, he did a great tattoo and, I, and it's my favorite tattoo, but it's mine. I own yeah. it. There's uh, one tattoo that I have that I will never cover up. And he did it. Yeah. He did it. Um, yeah. It's on my thigh, and it's okay. for my daughter. Oh, okay. Um, and that's one, especially considering the, the time that I got it, it, it that will never go yeah. away. There you and, go. and it's like, you know, okay, that's fine. That's that's one piece that will be staying. But yeah, no, I, I you know, I like the whole trying something new, seeing uh, how it works. I love it. But, you know, it's just a bummer that your mentor, your mentor, you know, you have bad memories mm-hmm. of this, but you're in a space where you can create. And I saw you mentoring your wife mm-hmm. when I was leaving and you were mentoring her in piercing because you do piercings as well mm-hmm. and and that kind of stuff. And that's what I love. And um, around here at Sticky Paw Studios, I learned from all these guys that are much younger than me um, who don't have my experience, but they have experience in space, like back there producing this show or, or whatever. And, you know, we have to, we have to grow and keep moving forward. Always. And speaking yeah. of you, I want to get to you. Cause the night that I met you, you were like, oh yeah, I'm a gypsy. <laughs> I'm from a gypsy family, you know, and I knew what a gypsy you, you guys was. have actually met before you've yeah met i know before. but we never but, okay yeah yes, that's true we pictures of you i yes. know but we never like talk talk that's exactly. the difference so exactly. we have met quite a few times we just never talked that was the difference yeah so then he was like talking that's to me and, what yeah. <laughs> that's okay well you know i was working the time was, like, i was on stage yeah. yeah and stuff when when i met her yeah. and i was around her a few times but drunk. this time i was getting to hang out and you know, and have a lot of fun and, yeah. and you got into it. So growing, you're growing up, where are you from? I'm originally from Los Angeles County. Now I did live on the East Coast for like nine years and I've lived in Colorado almost three years and then I've lived here. Okay. Uh, for So that's the two- accent. <laughs> that's where the accent comes from. The nine years, that just like, oh, no. that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, well, no, a, lot, a good amount is brain damage. I had oh. a stroke. <laughs> What? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah, I had a preeclampsia when I was uh, pregnant with Toby. And uh, when I was in labor with him, I had a stroke and it changed how I talked. Wow. I was supposed to get like a bunch of therapy and everything, but like I had just made just over the limit every month of like what you can make. And so I had to pay my insurance and I had to pay for this stuff. And they were going to like, I think cover like a month or something. I was like, and then I was going to have to pay all of it um, out of pocket or what. No, I didn't have great insurance. And I was like, Wait, can you understand what I'm saying? They're like, yeah. I'm like, therapy's over. Done. <laughs> wow. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that, but it is what it is. No, so. I love it. I love it's her personality. Like listening to all the guys in the, in the shop, you know, mimicking you was, was <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. Like I, I dug it. Oh, I totally don't <laughs> mind at all. All they do. Come I'm on. Like, uh, I, I even find the... myself doing it like when I'm by myself now. Do you? So. <laughs> 
You yeah. gotta do it. You gotta do it for him. It's like literally. No, it's my, talk. my favorite. No, she's crazy. She's, she's crazy. crazy. <laughs> she's so crazy. Why are you doing that? I don't know. She's crazy. <laughs> they are crazy. Yeah. They are. You know. I do that like literally when I'm alone now. I'll just I don't know what the fuck is going on. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes people come in and they act crazy and I have to point it out. Yeah, well, it's but not it's not her fault. fault. It's not my but fault. But it's not her fault. It's okay. not my fault because these people sometimes they get stupid and I have to say something. It's right. so like don't be stupid and I won't say anything. Oh no, leave it to Val. She'll she'll take care oh, of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, t I, I cause problems sometimes, but it's uh, like I said, I'm like, I'm not, I'm a very nice person, but if you start getting dumb, like I'll get dumb right back. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I loved it. I loved meeting you and <laughs> it's, it, 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 you saying something made me think of, weren't you sick? Did when? you get sick a little while back? I had a, yeah. In fact, the, the our, our friends, the yeah. Patrick the brothers, I had, yeah, I had cancer. That's what I thought. I beat it like, I guess it'll be three years. Give it sorry. up. Give so it up. far. So far. Yes. Good yeah. for you. I, I got the good colon cancer, the one they get rid of, and you don't have to, you know, no chemo, no I radiation. I was so scared when I saw that. Yeah. So, yeah, it, was, it, it happened so fast that I never, it was during COVID, so never really had a lot of time to process it. So the people that go through it for years and years, and it comes back in years, those are the, those people are like heroes. Yeah, because it's scary. It was a scary two months, you know, before the the surgery and that that I don't uh, wish on my worst enemy. Yeah, you know? well, I'm glad yeah. that you're okay. And that so far, it made me think of that today. I was like, wait a minute, I remember seeing this. Yeah, and I reached out to you, but there was. Uh, I never got a check from you. I never. Yeah, I never. You never saw a check. No, damn. No, Scott lost him. Yeah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> No, I even look at the picture. I mean, you know, she had a birthday party for me over at Bootlegger. Okay. And all these people showed up, but it was COVID, so they were they were, weren't they a little whiny about people being yeah, too they many got people dumb real there. quick. Yeah, they got dumb really quick over. It's like, like I have fucking cancer, and you're worried about more than five people sitting at a table. I mean, if I'm not worried about it, why are you guys worried about it? These are all my friends, and they're not scared. So, right. Yeah, Stop. that became awkward and horrible. Like, I think that was yeah. the last. A lot of time people, we yeah, a lot, a lot of people service. were scared to go, you know, to to come, you know. Right. And then the same thing happened. Um, what three months later, they they shrunk my head for you know in the. Oh um, yeah. They had a head uh, the what's that place called? Um, tiki, the Tiki Gold, Bar, Golden Tiki, Golden Tiki. Golden tiki. Yeah. There you go. Um, <clears throat> and they did it in November, and. You know, people are scared to come out. So, I mean, we had a good crowd, but it wasn't, you know, right. as big as it should. I, a lot, I oh, miss, yeah. The, the, I miss having a lot freaking. of my friends there, you know. Yeah, everyone well, freaked over the COVID stuff. I want my, that, you know, it's not different owner now. So, I like the guy, Brandon Powers. Have you ever met him? We love him. Uh -huh. Evil I, Pie. He owns Evil. He, you know, he started Evil Pie. It's his okay. concept. He started the Golden Tiki. It was his concept. And then they kind of burned him. So, he's off to other, better, bigger things. And my head's still in there and it's like him i don't want my fucking head in there after you burn my friend it's not it doesn't right. mean anything to me anymore i'd rather just you know let oh, my, let my dogs even, play with it or something i even, <laughs> I even uh had designed for for brandon because i love them yeah. and um well i still do but like i designed this skull for him and i like covered it with rhinestones it's gorgeous it's still there i'm like Man, you should have taken it with you. That was for you. Like I made it for him, and they oh, wouldn't and let him take there. it. Yeah. It's still there. I'm like, yeah. I made it for him, and they get to keep it. It's stupid. You're getting into you're an artist too. Yeah. So you do art. You do, and, and not to change topics, know, but ahead. but when I was walking in, you were doing a like a bust. oh the chest yeah, yeah. chest yeah I, I was doing a male chest. It was uh, oh that didn't sound right. No, it's yeah. uh, no, no no okay so sounded right coming out of you, but go ahead. It, what? <laughs> so um, I am a, a, an artist out of an amazing gallery in the Venetian Casino. And uh, so what I do is I'm like... Thanks for the plug, Valerie. Whatever. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're stupid. All right. So anyways, um, so anyways, um, I basically am a crystal artist, but I don't just do crystal. I can like mold. I can sculpt. I can... Uh, I mean, I do all kinds of stuff like quilting, uh, right. decoupage, reverse decoupage painting. Like I, I'm kind of like all over the place. Uh, even cross stitch, I love cross stitch. Um, <laughs> I know it's I'm the wrong age. Um, anyways, uh, 
you know, I got into the the blinging, and so yeah. I've been in a couple galleries. I was in Signature Gallery before, and uh, but then I went over to Anne Amazing, and they have a uh, you know more of like the rock and roll kind of feel, yeah. and it works out. But I've uh, you know designed for many celebrities, and so that's how I got into uh, Anne Amazing Gallery. So like guitars, like the yeah. other day you were saying you did. Uh, I did a guitar for Gene Simmons. I did a guitar for. Uh, I've done a couple for DJ Ashba. Um, who? Huh? Who? DJ Ashba from Guns oh. N' Roses. What? Oh. You're so stupid. <laughs> He's, you're so rude. I've done some, uh, you know, like alien masks for him. And then I've done um, Carrot Top. I've, Shoes. Uh, Is that Flavor alien, Flav. Huh? The alien mask. You did the one where. Both of them. Where his, his DJ, DJ wears. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've the seen darks, those. Yeah. The DJ's crystals. DJ. Yeah. Exactly. DJ's DJ. I love it. Um, yeah, so it's uh, the dark crystal one yeah. I did and then the light crystals. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah, the, anything I've you seen see with your the crystals. I've seen your work then. Yes. Yes, that's awesome. I've seen your work. Flavor Flav. Flav, I mean, Flavor loved his clock. I mean, he I never, saw a picture of that. That was actually yeah. on a Super Bowl commercial. That was uh, like when I made oh, that. Oh, was, that uh, was the heavy hitter. He was one of the DJs on the heavy hitter. Okay. He pulled his clock out and held it out. He was, yeah, boy, on the, you know, yeah. during the Super Bowl. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. An amazing we job made over $10 million dollars on. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. No, he didn't make any money <laughs> off that. Dream. And I believe it's coming right. It's coming around to me